is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fan, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean Davis. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. Let's talk some old school NBA basketball. In today's episode, I want to feature Moses Malone. In my opinion, one of the most underrated players in NBA history. And I want to take a look at what NBA legends have to say about the great Moses. But before we dive into that, I want to ask you guys for a small favor. If you're new to the show, please subscribe to the channel and also like the video if you like the content. All right, enough said. Now let's dive into today's episode. Now the first clip that I want to show you guys is from the MB80 series. Now let's have a look. Philly was already loaded when it added Moses Malone to the mix. Oh, man, I love Moses. Moses is single the greatest influence in my NBA career. That was it. You know, we got to the doorstep and couldn't get in. We got Moses. Malone with the offensive rebound. Is Malone strong or what? The more they push me, it feels like the stronger I get. And I get more aggressive than I know what I got I to do. I always love him because he always, it was mumbles. He was the only player who would get 30 rebounds and 30 points. They couldn't interview him. They just, he was like, how you feel? Mm-hmm, yeah. When he started talking to you, you go, huh? He loved to scrum. So when he started scrumming with Moses, like he would win that because he'd be like grabbing your arms and you couldn't move and stuff. I just thought he overpowered it. Maybe that's not a good word. Maybe I should have said punishing. I don't know. What the hell's the difference? <laughs> I think the Lord gave me this, this talent to be the best. Uh, that's why I think I would name Moses. Moses Malone. That's not even a nickname. That's his real name. Imagine you're 6'10", your name is Moses, and you can't play ball. That's a lot to live with. What was it? What is- and wait, Little Mo, who else was The doctor, Kevin Maloney. What was that? Little Mo, Big Mo, the doctor, Andrew Tony, and Ivoroni. No baloney. Sixes Six all, all the way. way. <laughs> I remember that. They said Moses took us to the promised land. Like you couldn't beat them. The two-time MVP owned the middle and also one of the most unique guarantees in all of sports. Four, four, four. Uh, <laughs> I said four, four, four. So it's four, four, and five or something, something to that point. Four, 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 yeah. With the talent that we had, I think we had an opportunity to do it. One break for Philly, there's the doctor. It was so, so great because you, I, I loved Moses and, and, and Doc needed help and they just swept through. There it goes, Cheeks on his way to the world championship. The Moses slammed up, congratulate the world champion, Philadelphia 76ers. 444 became, you know, 454 and, uh, and history was made. How's it feel to get him in four straight though? Oh man, that's the best. Come on! They needed to get somebody with Julius. So he needed a little bit of help. This is the man, and he was on a mission. We need one guy who's going to be there for 38, 40 minutes a night. And they got the right man at the right time, a fellow by the name of Moses Malone. One of my favorite NBA journalists is Chris Bussard, simply because he covers a lot of NBA old school basketball. And on his show, he has a section or had a section called You Kids Just Don't Know How Good a Certain Player Was. And he had Moses Malone as a topic once. Now let's have a look. He swept Magic, Kareem, and the Showtime Lakers in the NBA Finals. He's got more MVPs than Shaq and Kobe. Combined, he was a champion, a Hall of Famer, and a trailblazer. I'm telling you, you kids just don't know how good Moses Malone was. And the following clips are many of Moses Malone's peers, many guys who played against Moses in his prime. Now let's have a look. Moses was relentless. I mean, he he just never stopped. He went after everything. I tell you, it's like being on a railroad track and a locomotive is coming at you and there's no way you can stop it. He wasn't the most skilled player. 
Uh, he was a guy who would be willing to throw up the worst kind of shot ever, knowing though that he could land and pounce. He was very much like a cat. I think the Lord gave me this talent to be the best. Uh, that's why I think I would name Moses. In 1974, he became one of the first players to go directly from high school to the pros, signing with the ABA's Utah Stars. I was at his press conference. New York City when he when he became a high school player declaring he was skinny and I mean really skinny a guy you'd look at and you'd say you know no way it's not gonna happen when we signed him I knew that he had great talent I had no idea that he'd be doing the things that he's doing right now uh, he is one of the quickest jumpers I've ever seen he could be maybe the best offensive rebounder in the history of the game uh, he's very good at it now and I'm sure in a year or two, when he's old enough to shave, he'll be excellent. After two years in the ABA, Malone moved to the Houston Rockets of the NBA in 1976. And at the age of just 21, he quickly showed he would become a force in the league. If you didn't absolutely face guard, there was no chance. If you turned your head, you were going to lose sight of him, and he was going to get the offensive rebound. He became a dominant uh, force in the middle where you couldn't do anything with him. You could see that he became a man because he became physical and tough. He uh, has a mean streak. Malone's fierce playing style masked an inner shyness. His introverted demeanor made him a puzzling figure, perceived by many as being distant. Moses was the kind of guy, you know, from, from a writer's standpoint, very, very difficult to get close to. Didn't speak that well. There were guys I remember that used to mock him. When you come in and you're a shy kid, and then you get bombarded by the media every day, I mean, you could turn inward and say, you know, I'm just not going to get burned by this. He had a very mysterious aura about him. I think it was a lot of insecurity because when you're out into the real world, out in society, you, you, you tend to function a little bit differently because this is an arena that you're really not sure about. But it was on the court where Moses clearly felt most at ease and he continued to develop into one of the game's best centers. In 1979, he was named the league's MVP, and two years later, he led the underdog Rockets all the way to the finals against the Boston Celtics. Moses Malone has had to work hard. Still can't get the ball to drop. Here he goes again, and he still can't. Malone pushes it in. With Moses carrying them on his back, the Rockets took Boston to six games before coming up short. The following year, Malone was once again named MVP, but he could not lead Houston back to the finals. And in 1982, he was traded to Philadelphia. Instead of single-handedly carrying a team, he was now asked to be the missing piece of a championship puzzle. Moses gonna take us to the promised land, the promised land, the promised land. Moses gonna take us to the promised land. Just see the changes in the whole thing. They understood. They knew this is the man, and he was on a mission. And he came. He had come to Philadelphia to get a win. Below on the rebound, up court, touchdown. Ah. Julius baseline. Ah. Malone with the offensive rebound. Is Malone strong or what? The more they push me, I feel like the stronger I get, and I get more aggressive than I know what I, I, I got to do. Wait a minute. The more they push you, the stronger you get. Oh yeah, I love pushing. His personality just came out, and you know, it just made for great chemistry. We had great chemistry on our team. Blocked by Malone. Here comes the fast-breaking Sixers. Up they come, Cheeks. Here's Irving. Malone, basket it good. Wow. gave our team the feeling that whoever we stepped on the court with, we had an advantage in the center. He came in with such a passion. He came in with a, a level of pride that few players were ever able to match. And he's averaging almost 16 rebounds a game. Now he's the best offensive rebounder I've ever seen. Watch the speed, my goodness. Oh, Moses Malone on the follow. He's too far under and really hit the bottom of the rim going up. Oh. And he goes back up. We got Moses. He always talked about um, going to work. It's time to go to work. It's time to go to work. That's one of his phrases, it's time to go to work. And it comes from a a guy like me that love to win. You know, I like to win. I don't like to lose. I think when you work hard, you know, you, you get a much better fit. See if they take advantage of that matchup. Malone. 
Philadelphia uh, now. You won't get many second or third chances if you miss. So how good was Moses Malone in my opinion? Well, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, to me, Moses Malone is one of the most underrated players of all time, one of the greatest bigs of all time, one of the greatest rebounders of all time, and again, one of the players that I really loved back in the days. So that was it for today's episode, you guys. Hope you enjoyed the content. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine.